All right, we're back with another video, and I had seen in the in the last video there was some interest in animations, and I had also in Discord, uh, in LibGDX Discord, there seemed to be some interest in in more videos on uh, uh, mainly fun right now, focusing on 3D and just for someone just trying to get into LibGDX 3D, and and also using GDX GLTF. So. What this video is going to cover is in Blender creating a very basic rig for animation on a model and then creating some basic animations for that model. And then at the end, we will get into the code and run those animations in libgdx. And so if you if you're already familiar with rigging or animations, feel free to skip to the code part. And and here we go. Okay, so we're going to start with the model, the same model I used in my last video for importing in, uh, from Blender, exporting into libgdx. This is a public domain model on open game art, and it has it does not have a, a rig, so we're going to create a very basic rig just for completeness, and, and then add some basic animations. So starting with Blender, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the wireframe mode. And if I press three, and by the way, you should be able to see my key presses at the bottom left here. Uh, as I know, Blender can be kind of tough to navigate and I still get confused all the time. So with wireframe, what we need to do to get animations working is to add an armature. To do that, we'll go to add here and then look for armature. And what we end up getting is a, a, essentially a root bone. So I'm gonna zoom in with a scroll wheel and then I'm going to use holding shift in my middle mouse button. I can then go ahead and move this view around. Uh, and of course, so three gives you this that gives you the side view. Um, but I'm also going to go ahead and let me press one. If I remember correctly, I think this model is it's not asymmetric or it's not symmetric. So I'm going to go ahead and select the model. I'm just going to fix that really quick. As good as we can. And then hit back to three. And so in the right pane here, we will see that we have the armature now and we have the root bone. So we're going to need more bones to get to, to, to animate this model, right? So I'm going to hit the tab button or actually if you go down here into edit mode, now we can edit the bones. And then I'm going to press the E key, which will allow me to add in a, a new bone. And I'll press E again. And again, this is going to be very basic. Um, rigging is not really my specialty. I've just learned what I need to, to get by. Um, from the root bone, I'm going to move it a little bit. So I'm going to select this point here and then press G. So I can, I can move this bone around a little bit. And uh, you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to keep it. I think I might keep it here for now. This isn't going to be pretty, but it, it's going to move around. <laughs> uh, so I'll go ahead. I'll hit E from here. I'll just I'll put a bone in the front and we'll put one in the back as well. And I guess I'll we could shift this up just a little bit. OK, so we have some bones. Uh, now what? Well, for the bones to be able to actually act on the mesh, they have to be attached or parented in. So right now, if I if I go to this bone and I press R and try to manipulate it, uh, well, one nothing nothing's going to happen. Uh, even if we go into our our pose mode, which is where you normally see uh, the mesh being able to move around, we don't see that. Uh, so to fix that, uh, I believe we have to be in edit mode. I'll go ahead and I'll press A to select all the bones. And actually, um, let's go to the, the pane here to do this. And I believe we select the model first, shift click the armature, and then click Alt P. And I think I got it backwards. So let's start with the armature and then shift click the model, hit Alt P. And nope, that's not it either. There it is. Okay, so it's Control P. I get them mixed up all the time. And what we want to do, so set parent, we have some different options here. And I think I lost my selection, so let me select them again. Control P, that's what we want to see. So set parent to uh, armature deform, 
And then we have with automatic weights. That's the easiest way to do it right now. Uh, is it's going to automatically weight paint. Blender's going to make guesses. And weight painting I won't get into. There's a lot of tutorials on it. I know a little bit, but I'm not an expert in it. So we'll hit that. And we'll notice we actually can see the, the mesh down here as well now in the armature. But if we go back to select our armature, our bones, and then now if we go to pose mode, and let's select one bone and move it around. Now, the mesh and bone are connected. So we can actually move these pieces. Now that we have that, we can move on to some really basic animations. Okay, so now it's time for the fun part. And I am not an animator, not even close, but we can have a lot of fun with this anyways. Now let's head over to the animation tab. And this is going to be where we see our, our animation or our dope sheet. Uh, first thing I do is I click here and instead of dope sheet, I go to the action editor. And we want to create a new animation. So I'll click new. And let's create a basic idle animation. So I will give it the name idle and hit enter. And now we are editing that animation. And so we'll start with uh, our first frames, which will just be our default position. And in this view here, I'm going to hit A to select all of our bones. And then I'm going to hit I to insert keyframes. And in this case, I'm going to insert the location rotation and scale. And now we have our default position for this animation. And so to have some fun, let's go ahead and we'll press one to get a front view of the model. Zoom in a little bit here. And we'll just have them, maybe we'll just try to make them look around a little bit. So I'll select these two bones, control and uh, click them or shift click them, I mean. And let's then click uh, actually, before we make that step, I make this mistake all the time. We want to drag this uh, to our frame that we want to to make the change on. So let's go. We'll do. Um, we'll go 40 frames. And let me zoom in here to make this a little bit easier. Now that we're on this 40th frame, I will hit the R button. And oops. We don't want to rotate like that. Let me bring this menu out and select these bones. We should be able to now rotate it on the Y axis here a little bit. It might end up looking a little strange, but that's fine. And then I'm going to hit. So now I have these bones in the position that I want. I'm going to hit I and I'm going to update. So I'm going to insert new keyframe for the location and rotation. And we should see that updated here. So now if we drag the playhead, you can actually see the interpolation between these these keyframes. So he looks. Uh, now I want to bring him back to center. So one of the easiest ways to do that, I'm going to select the start frames. And then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate, which is uh, I think is used all around in Blender. Uh, for du for just duplicating models or anything that you're working with. And I'll drag these to uh, frame 80 or close to it. And uh, G is a key for usually moving things in Blender. Okay, now uh, let's make him... So if we watch, if we watch now, he's going to center. And let's make him do the same thing in the opposite direction. So I'm going to move the playhead to the next frame that I want him to uh, to move from. And we'll go to 120. And move him just a little bit. Insert. So I and then location and rotation. Um, now we should be, yep, now we have an animation going that way. And then lastly, we will, if you didn't guess already, take the default uh, starting point, duplicate those again, and we'll move them up a little, a little ways so that we end at the same place that we started. 
we can now preview this animation. And if I drag this out a little bit, we'll switch to our colored view here and let's run the animation. Eh, it's not very pretty, but it works. And so I'm also going to shorten the length of the animation to the last frame here by bringing it down to 150. And if I come back, if we play this animation again, it should loop now. There we go. Now, the next step is how do we save this animation so that it gets imported into libgdx? In the action editor, we're going to see this button uh, push down. So this pushes the animation into the NLA stack. NLA stands for non-linear animation. So I'm going to hit that button. If we now go to our right pane, we can verify that it, the animation is now stored in an NLA track. If we expand this out, we can see the idle animation. That's great. Now I'm going to go ahead and export the model. So file. And we'll use uh, the GLTF. And for now, I'll just export it to this directory. We'll move it into the game directory uh, in the next video. And I did go over these uh, import options uh, in the last video, if you're not sure. So if you need, if you want more information on that, definitely check it out. Uh, for now, I'm just going to export the selected objects. And then also here for animation specifically. Uh, group by NLA track is an option that you want to make sure is checked. And I do believe it's checked by default. And so we got GLTF separate. I'll go ahead and export that. It's time for everyone's favorite part, which is getting into the code. I'm going to use the same project from my last video uh, for showing how to import a model using GDX GLTF. And in this project, I've updated the model to the new model with the animation in it. So we'll get started. Now, how do we run the animation? To do that, there's some added convenience with using GDX GLTF, because in the scene class, we already have an animation controller instantiated for us. We do not have to create an instance of one. We don't even have to update it. Um, we don't have to call update on it because uh, GDX GLTF is handling that behind the scenes for us. So I'm going to go to the bottom of our initialization code and access that animation controller and set an in our, in our idle animation. So for the parameters, we'll pass in the name of the animation that we put in Blender. And then for the second parameter, I'm going to use a loop count of negative one, which will mean that it will play continuously. So if we go ahead and launch the application, Oh, actually, so before I do that, I'm going to comment out this rotation code from the first video. We don't want to rotate the model while we're trying to look at the animation. And there we go. We got the animation playing. Looks, <laughs> it looks okay. Uh, now what I'll go into is what if we want to transition to a different animation, a jump, maybe a jump animation. And there's a couple ways to do that. So I'll go ahead and add a conditional on a key press and we'll use the space bar here. So as an added bonus, I went ahead in five minutes in Blender, I put together a very cheesy and terrible jump animation and made it look as bad as I could because it's just funny. And so we're gonna use that as our transition animation. So we, we want to access the scene animation controller again. First, just to show you uh, this is not what we're going to end up using in the end, but I want to show you the difference. I'll call this jump animation using the same way we did before, calling set animation. And pay attention to the head as I press the spacebar. You can see that the the body or the, the, the bones, they snapped immediately to the position of the 
other the jump animation which it doesn't so it doesn't care where the body was at it just immediately snaps to the position of the first keyframe of the other animation which doesn't look very good or smooth so to get her to um to make that look a little better we can do uh, there's a couple different methods to do this so there's an animate method but in this case we're doing a jump a short-lived animation there's a method for this called action and so again we'll, we will put in the jump animation and fill out these parameters we only want this to play one time or i'm sorry uh, we yeah so loop count zero uh speed will play at full speed so animation listener uh we'll have to implement animation listener to to throw to to call this action so to do that i'll come up to the top of our class and implement it now hit alt enter so we can add these methods to the class Okay, we're not going to need them now, but we might use them here soon. So now we can pass in this. And transition time. So the transition time is the time it'll take to blend how the, how the animations are going to blend together. And for now, we'll do 0 0.5. So let's take a look at that animation again. Oh, I must have made a mistake here. Let's see. Maybe it's the loop count. There we go. Okay. So we can see now, uh, no matter what part of the animation that we're in, when I press the space bar, it's more smoothly translates. So the, the jump animation starts while the idle animation smooths back in or interpolates back in to the jump animation. And it looks for a much better uh, transition. Okay, now I will talk about the animation listener since we went ahead and implemented it on this class. You get two options here. Um, you know, if you have a short-lived animation that fired off once, you could get this uh, listener called on that event when the animation is ended, or you have on loop. And now these come in handy because, uh, say, if I wanted to implement a random transition on idle, maybe I have an idle two animation. And so you could implement a condition here where on every loop of the animation, you could have it uh, have a random chance of uh, doing an action animation into your idle two. So that's how you could utilize the animation listener uh, for adding a little more dynamics to your animations as well. And so that's all I have for this video. Again, if you, if you like the video, if you want to see more, you know, Please, uh, I, I look at the comments, so feel free to leave a comment, like the video, and that lets me know, hey, there's, there's interest, and, and I'll make some more videos. Thanks.